she said, but God wants you to know that it's it's not going to happen right away. Um, and you're going to have a lot of physical issues. Um, and it's not in your time. It's not in your timing. It's in God's timing. And to trust God. And that you're going to have to trust because a lot of time is going to pass and you're going to think, you know, why, 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 why can't I have children? And she said, and you're going to have to trust. God wants you to trust, 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 because nothing in this life is in your timing, Larissa. Nothing. It's in God's timing. So what she led me to believe is that I'm always going to feel like I'm a late bloomer, you know, like that it takes, everything takes a bit longer to bloom in certain ways than I would hope for it to. And she said that this is a part of what I have to learn in this lifetime is trusting and, and that at the end of my life, it'll all make sense why everything had to be in God's timing and not mine. So, oh, that's just right. It's just like, whew. And again, I didn't really like that answer. Like she gave, she told me. You got to accentuate the positive. Wow! I feel good. A little bit of feel good goes a long way. You're listening to Karen Swain, teacher of deliberate creation, accentuating the positive, showing you a way to a better life. Accentuating the positive, it's not just fad, it's sanity. Who in their right mind would accentuate anything else? Hello and welcome to another show, Accentuating the Positive with Karen Swain. As always, such a blessing to be with you all. Well, look who's in the house, the wonderful and delicious Larissa Stowe. Welcome to the show, Larissa. So grateful to be here. So grateful to see you. <laughs> Larissa Stowe and I met about 20 years ago, actually in your house in, uh, in America, when I was over there traveling with my then husband. I had a friend here, Ananara. Do you remember Ananara? Of course, yeah. And, and she said, oh, you have to go and see my friend Larissa Stowe. And she gave me your name and number. And you said, come stay with us. You have to come stay with us. So you invited a couple of Aussie strangers into your home and we stayed with you. And that was such a wonderful, beautiful experience. So I'm forever grateful. That was the last time I was in the States. But of course, I speak to people around the world all the time. So I feel like I practically live there now. Wow, I didn't realize that was your last time in the States. Yeah, haven't traveled for a while. But let me tell people who don't know about you, I'm sure lots of people do, a little bit about your uh, life with your bio. Larissa Stowe was born to wake, shake and create a vibration raising we revolution or weevolution yes. <laughs> in this world. At 12, Larissa was accepted to study Reiki under the legendary teacher Takara, who brought Reiki to the Western world. She studied with life coach experts such as Martha Beck, was mentored under the late Sounds True author and teacher Thomas Ashley Farron, and earned her neurolinguistic programming coaching certificate under world renowned NLP expert Nikura. Is that how you say her name? Is that a woman or Nierka. a man? <laughs> Nierka. Close. Yeah, Nierka. Is that a woman or a man? A woman. A woman. Oh, so they were yeah, very mostly, strong. Mostly women teachers. How beautiful. Yeah. A modern day mystic, student of heart centered living, sacred sounds, gypsy, and transformational life coach with her embodiment coaching practice. Larissa teaches at festivals and conscious raising events around the world, including Bhakti Fest, Lightning in a Bottle, and the Balik. Bali Spirit Music Fest. She regularly leads transformational play shops and world-renowned retreats, incorporating tools from her private practice, which includes Kundalini Awakening and NLP techniques. Larissa is the lead singer and songwriter of the band Larissa Stowe and Shakti Tribe, a sacred world mantra rock group inspired to up-level consciousness, helping people live a heart and soul-centered life and your website is larissastowe.com yeah i know a little bit about your story but i'm sure people that are watching this that haven't met you before don't 
let's start at the beginning. Like what was happening at 12 years old for you to want to learn Reiki? I was one of those kids that came in and I just saw God in everything as a child. I didn't see separation between myself and others. I just, I thought we were all God. You know? like, and, and as a child, I thought we were making it all up. You know, I had this, I just knew, like at the core of my core, I looked around and I'm like, I'm doing a really good job. <laughs> I felt that way. And I, and I felt like everybody else was doing a great job too. You know, that, that we, that as a collective, were creating absolute magic from the inside out. So I had a propensity. I just had a love for God, for everything um, that radiated love and was just, just soaked uh, everything up that I possibly could um, that felt like it was of that vibration. So when I heard about this Reiki um, teacher coming, and I didn't know what Reiki was, but I knew it was hands-on healing, and I had heard about Takata coming, um, I was like, yes, please. So my dad actually shared about it, and my mom and I signed up together for the course, and we took it together. And it was fascinating because um, Takata, when she saw me, um, she, she said, yeah, I don't take children. You know, your energy, you're too young for this. And I said, I know I'm not. <laughs> I was convinced that I wasn't. So I was like, feel my energy. <laughs> like, I'm like, I know, I know that I, my energy is mature enough. I said, would you just feel it? <laughs> Which she did. And she said, you're right. You're right. And so, um, yeah, I, I may have been the first child. I'm not sure. Um, I like to think, you know, that, that at least in that, at that point, it, it appeared that she had never, um, worked with somebody what as young you? as I had. Mm -hmm. As you, as you, you know, explain who you were as a child, I'm just thinking about your children now, <laughs> probably exactly the same when you sort of try and put this, oh, but you're just a child on them. They're like, no, I'm not. Like, I might be wearing this body, but this is an old soul inside here, right? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And my children definitely have that similar kind of like, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Take a look. Can't you see? <laughs> you know, I think they do have that. Both of them have that for sure. That was so really you, powerful. So your mom was obviously open to it. Like she was open to energy medicine. Yeah, both my parents were really open to it. They had studied with Brew Joy. Um, I don't know if you remember, there's a book called Joy's Way. And mm. Brew Joy, um, during my parents' time, he was a, a really big teacher. And he, would, mm. he had a place called Sky High Ranch that my parents went and studied with him. And I was so jealous because, again you know, children weren't allowed. And, um, I just felt like that's wrong. I should be allowed. Um, but they were very much exposed to it. I've got to say, I so relate to that. I felt exactly the same as a kid. I just could not wait to grow up. It was like, I need to, I need to do stuff in this world. And there's a lot of stuff that kids can't do. <laughs> right. And, we're and, and when you're a child, people kind of say, Oh no, you know, they, they just don't understand. Like if you have a really old soul and. Right. And you know that you've come in with a plan and a mission and you want to get started. I think there's so many kids on the planet like that. But I'm sure that a lot of people are relating to their children listening to this. Uh, yeah. They're busting to like, they want, they ask a million questions. They want to know everything. They know they've come in with a bit of a mission and um, they're off and running. So, okay. So what, so that's 12 then. What happened next? I played a lot with the Reiki. I gave a lot of Reiki sessions to my friends um, over the years. And I started meditating, like really meditating when I was about 15. Um, and during meditation, I had an experience that 
really changed everything for me. I had this incredible experience of focusing on, on a point on the wall and and then my feeling my body melting into the chair that I was in, um, feeling my breaths like, and I don't even know, you know, like how you look back and you're like, did that really happen? You know, but my memory, my, what I experienced was, is that I didn't need to breathe that my, it's like that stopped and that my breath, my heart slowed down. And, and I remember like merging so completely and I remember this white, which is interesting because now I don't really see white. I see more darkness now. But back then I saw all this white. And at one point I felt like I was dying because I didn't need to breathe. I couldn't feel my heart beat. I couldn't distinguish between me and the chair that I was in. I couldn't, I couldn't feel Larissa anymore as a separate. So I thought I was dying and I couldn't get back into my body. And so I found my vocal cords because back then if I had a nightmare, I would make a sound with my vocal cord and that would help to pull me out of the dream. So I found my vocal cords and pulled myself out of this meditation. But then after that meditation, I started being able to see people's past lives. I started being able to see auras. I, the walls started breathing. Lamps would jump up and down. You know, that it really worried my parents a lot. Um, yeah, my mom was like, please stop doing that. You know, she's like, she's really concerned about my mental health. Um, and my father wasn't concerned so much about my mental health, but he was really concerned about me getting trapped in the astral realm. <laughs> so, um, and having like encounters with other beings in the, in the astral realm. So he didn't want me to do it but I really felt like I was supposed to. And I really felt like even though like I had a hard time coming back, I realized after coming back and seeing people's past lives and, um, and seeing orc fields and, and just experiencing all these things, um, I knew that it was good for me. So I continued cause it brought me into my heart. It helped me to, expand into a state, a, a space of love more. And I did that until I got bored of it, <laughs> which, <laughs> which I did at a certain point. I was like, then it was like, all oh, right. Okay. I even got bored of seeing people's faces change and auras and all that. It became kind of like, mm, whatever. I was like, I realized I'd kind of gone as deep as I could go at that time. So I, I pulled out of it. Um, and it wasn't until years later that I just started diving back in again. So I've kind of had these, you know, when I was younger, like going in deep and coming out, going in yeah. deep, um, coming out. Uh, and then it was like 2000. I feel like it, it started happening in 2006 and I wish I would have just written everything down perfectly. So, cause I feel like I, every time I talk about it, I, it's like, was it 2006? Was it 2008? You know, it's like, it's a little mushy now, but, um, I believe it was, a, you know what I'm talking about? How it gets like yeah. that when time goes. As I'm listening to you, I'm thinking to myself, God, you think you know somebody and until you actually really, you know, quiz them about their life, you really never know people until you do, do a show like this, like really hear people's backstory, you know, uh, it's so fascinating, but what you were going through at like 15 exploring and playing with like as you're exploring you know your multi-dimensionalness and exploring energy is what like so many people are doing with ayahuasca now but you didn't need the ayahuasca <laughs> it's like I've never taken it but people say do you want to take it I said tell me what happens and they go oh this happened that happened this happened I go yeah that sounds like my life <laughs> right right yeah yeah, yeah. It's true. I mean, I've done ayahuasca, but yeah, you can have experiences, Plant medicine. profound, profound experiences, you know, because ayahuasca is pretty much activating the DMT, right. you know, within you. And we all have DMT already within us. Right. Um, and so I'm sure that you've had lots of experiences with your internal DMT. Yeah, I'm sure we all have, really. 
uh, maybe not we might be doing it you know doing dream time so uh so at 15 you're exploring energy and then you go okay been there done that wrote it down ticked it off and then yeah. you, did you just go back into like i'm gonna be just teenage girl think about not things it that teenage girls think about it wasn't that so much as it just became like well i kind of plateaued you know with it at the time like I felt like I went as deep as I could go in, in, with it. And so it didn't have the same, you know, uh, draw that it had in the beginning when I first started experiencing it. Everything was like, wow, you know, like, whoa. But then it was like, mm, all right, you know, I can, I just tilt my consciousness and I can see these things. But am I helping people deeply with it? it I hadn't like gotten to a point where I, really knew what to do with it you know it was just things I could do but it it was it felt more like a trick a parlor trick or you know it didn't have the depth that what had the most depth for me was the med in meditation just dropping into my heart and seeing how far I could go into my heart that felt like something that I needed to continually do um, but the other stuff was just like all right you know hmm. um, but around 2000, I think around 2006, it started, my kundalini started awakening and really, really, really was amping up in 2008, like a ton. And I started experiencing so much more of my multidimensionality at that point, like, you know, literally being taken over by what I what they call what we call because now they've taught me that they are actually we <laughs> so um the frequencies and which are just my parallel selves that exist now where my consciousness exists now in different places and aspects of my consciousness are just like pure energy and pure love but they have different flavors and they don't all feel like larissa they feel some of them feel completely like when I'm in it, it's almost like Larissa is just a suit. You know, Larissa's just a a program, not even, you know, it's, it's bizarre. You know, I experience myself more as these other beings to be more my authentic self than I do Larissa. And yet here I come back to Larissa again. And I feel like it's kind of like I'm in a, a movie you know, of Larissa, you know, I'm, I'm playing the character of Larissa. That's what it feels like more than anything to me. It feels like I'm playing this character and I'm really good at playing this character. <laughs> um, I completely relate. Absolutely. Completely relate. And, and felt like that even probably when I was going through puberty, I used to like laugh and say, God, look at this female form. Is this a joke or something? Like I just <laughs> No, relating to this body is something that I'm wearing rather than me and seeing it change. And, and uh, I still feel like that. I feel like I'm wearing a, yeah, a suit. Suit, right? <laughs> it's like, okay. It's like, okay. Yeah. Whereas yeah, our multidimensional selves, some of them are not so physical, you know, they're like pure energy mm -hmm. and, and they don't talk. You know, I have selves that do not, like talk feels very crude in some ways. And yet that's what Larissa knows. But in my multidimensionality, it's like there's just no need for words. Mm -hmm. It's just pure energy and it's love and it's very, it's very snaky and dragon. Um, so, I yeah, I started experiencing more of that in 2008 and started seeing blue lights coming in from the left side and I was told that was uh, the light of Sirius I didn't know anything about this like when I started seeing the blue light I didn't know anything about you know the Syrians or anything like that at the time I in fact I first heard about starseed but I hadn't heard of it on the outside of myself like and I that was even pre all the 2006 that was before then like I didn't I hadn't heard of starseed and then suddenly I heard on the inside about 
um, star seeds. And I first heard it about somebody else, like, um, I like to call them we, the, the frequencies. It's the easiest thing. Just from now on, I'll just say the frequencies because that some people say they're guides, but because they, we have shown me that it's just me multidimensionally in all these different forms, it feels weird calling them guides because even though they're much more evolved than I am in the sense that they're just pure love, whereas Larissa has a lot more shadow <laughs> than they do. Like that's a part of the game, you know, to be here is, you know, for us to grow is to have a lot of shadow. Like our shadow is what we need to grow here, right? It's necessary for growth. Um, but in those other realms, it's not about that, right? So, um, like it is here, here is all about growth. Earth is all about growing consciousness. Um, but yeah, they told, and I'm just going to say they, even though it's really me and we, it's just easier to say they. So they shared with me about somebody in my life being a star seed. Like when I first met somebody, they're like, he's a star seed. And they gave me all this information. And then I'm like, what's a star seed? And I start like, you know, Googling what a star seed is. And, and then I'm like, I'm like, whoa. And they're like, yeah, you're a star seed too. <laughs> you know? And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so, um, uh, I'm having so many aha moments as I'm speaking to you about you, uh, because I know some of your story and I'm thinking, ah, oh, that's why she's doing that. And that's what she's doing. And that's what she's doing, but we've got to get to that. But, uh, just exploring, you know, as a, as a higher dimensional being exploring this realm means that you've got to explore all levels of what it is to be human, including all the density, you know, including depression and disease and all the density that we can, and we can like dive through it and explore it and like, Ooh, what happens when I do this? And what happens to my body when I feel like this? And what happens when I feel like that? It's like this exploration of energy play. What happens when I sing? What happens when I chant? What happens when I stress? Yeah. Yes. It's all, it's all information for the one, you right. know, to grow the one. And so you can't get it wrong when you're here, even like we right. look at what we think is evil and what we think is bad, but you know, those souls are taking on diving into those pockets of consciousness so that we can understand the cause and effect of all of that as well. Right. Um, to grow. So it's like, you know, we get really like black, white, right, wrong here. But in the biggest picture, in the biggest picture, this is all just a place to grow and understand and deepen um, our awareness of what love is to embody love here. So, yeah, things yeah. are not what they appear to be. Yeah, absolutely. And in order to really know that embodiment of love, you have to really explore and dive into what it feels like not to embody love which a lot of us do and can get stuck in. But then the challenge is, if I go there, will I find my way out? Will I find my way back? And what method will I use in order to like return, return to love? Yeah. But you will eventually, like but even you if you don't eventually. remember in your body, you'll come out of your body and then I'll be like, whoops, <laughs> like, whoops, I totally forgot. But it's still like, well, but thank you for going, you know, thank you for <laughs> to earth and expanding consciousness and showing us what happens when you make all those choices right yeah so right. when you had your kundalini awakening did you and you started to wake up to who you are as a star seed i want to sort of explore the decision to bring a message through music because you know i speak to so many awakening souls and new world teachers who have something to share and then we've got to decide how am i going to share that like, am I going to speak about it, write about it, dance about it, sing about it? You know, like, how am I going to share what I've come to know about who we are, who we are? Yes. Well, for me, it was just because I love to sing. And I found out later, like, a, just a fun little story of when I was on the airplane um, coming back from uh, Amsterdam, no, Copenhagen, Copenhagen. I was put in a smoking section and I'm allergic to smoke, like being around all that smoke. So I was like dying in the smoking section. So I went and I sat 
next to the bathrooms. You could, there's a little seat that comes down right next to the, you know, so I was sitting there feeling really sorry for myself, like just, you know, cause I'd have to stand up every time somebody came to the bathroom to go and I sit back down, stand up. And this woman came by and, and she said, you know, what's wrong? Why are you here? And I shared with her, I got, we, our seats are in smoking. There's another, no other seats. I'm allergic to smoke. And I like just started tearing up and, you know, like feeling vulnerable and like, hey, I'm just, uh, and she's like, oh my God. She goes, I don't have a problem with smoke. Can I take your, your seat and you can sit in mine? And I'm like, really, are you sure? And she's like, yeah, I'm not allergic to smoke at all. And I'm like, oh my God, thank you. So we went back to her seat and there was a man sitting next to her and she said, I'm gonna take her seat because she's allergic to smoke. And he looks at me and he goes, you wanted to talk to her. And he goes, I'll go take the seat. And I'm like, look, <laughs> look. And she's like, well, this is true. <laughs> you know, she's like, I did wanna talk to you. And I go, oh, okay. And so he takes the seat. And she said that, that God gave her this ability to be able to um, see somebody's soul. And she said, when you got on the airplane, you had truth seeker just going boom, boom, flashing on your body when you got onto the airplane. And she goes, so when I saw you, she's like, I was excited. She's like, I want to talk to her. Because she said, I knew you were a kindred. Um, and she said, she told me that, um, that, that God had a lot to tell me and was it okay if she shared a lot with me? And I was like, yeah. So one of the things she proceeded to tell me is that and here I was only, I was in my 20s. And by the way, I'd had rheumatoid arthritis. When I went to Europe, I, ha I had had a healing with an angel, as you know, like you asked me to tell that story at St. Peter's Cathedral. This was the same trip. Okay. So I had just had my healing with the angel. And now I see this woman who, by the way, his name is Mary on the airplane. <laughs> who, who, there's this whole setup, right, for me to talk to her. And she oh says to me, I know it was, it was just, it's like, you can't make this shit up. You know, this <laughs> is one of the things that happen to us in life. It's just like, <laughs> you can't make this shit like, up. <laughs> like, and, and we have to tell the Mary, we have to tell the cathedral story as well because different audience, but yeah, but keep going, keep going. Um, so she goes on to share with me. She goes, she says, you know, I know you love music. And you're, you know, she starts to talk about my singing and I'm like, yes, yes. What's going to happen with that? <laughs> you know, cause I'm all excited. And that's, that was my thing. I was, you know, I've been singing forever. And, and she said, well, that's your vehicle. That's your vehicle. She said, it is not your only vehicle. It is just a vehicle. It's a view because it brings you so much joy. That is a vehicle and a tool for you to spread your inner knowing about God and your teachings. She goes, it's your teaching. She goes, you're a teacher. And she said, you're a teacher, number one. She said, before you're anything else, she's like, you could write books. You could go on a speaking circuit. You could sing your music. And at this moment, I was like this, like, you know, because I was like, I... In my 20s, I wanted to be a famous, you know, musician. So that was like, you know, so, and I had a cassette tape at that time, you know, that I wanted to give her and send her and like, you know, it was, like, it was a totally different time. And so I was, it was kind of a downer, you know, to hear her say this to me, to be honest with you. I was like, but I wanted, at that time, I just had these big grand visions and, and for her to tell me that this is, this is a vehicle. It's not the end all. It's a vehicle. And I'm like a teacher, you know, I mean, I love God, but I mean, of course I love God, but to teach and 
it later came about, you know, in life, it started making itself more and more known to me. And she told me lots, but that was one of the pieces that started coming into fruition. I'm like, all right, you know, later in life, I, I now see this. She was right. You know, God's, well, of course God's right. Cause she said, this is coming from God. God wants you to hear this. I want you to hear this piece that you have a mission to like pretty much spread love, you know, and the consciousness of love. And she told me all about the children I would have. And Did she? that was a trip. Wow. Uh, I was going to use, I was going to use your words. Um, you're here to up level consciousness. I just love that. <laughs> you're here to up level consciousness. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Well, up level is a fun word, right? It's fabulous. It's fun put together up and level you know like let's oh, lift it up i'm just loving it uh which is true which is what we're all doing here and including everyone that's listening to this exactly. oh, listening to this story it's just the activator the activator she activated you and it's so funny i had an activator too at 12 i'm 12 and my my father is remarried and his second wife has a baby and they get a nanny right and she reads my palm and she tells me i'm going to be a teacher and like you I'm devastated at that news. <laughs> I think that's the most boring thing that anyone, the most hideous thing everyone, anyone can ever tell. I know, like, <laughs> that's how I felt, right? It's like, but, you know, well, she, okay, okay. <laughs> but at 12, I'm thinking a maths teacher, you know, like a school teacher teaching math right. and all the stuff that I just hated learning at school. But it's so funny because this is what I do with people now, telling them they're a teacher and that's what they do. They're like, no, I'm not, no. And it's, it's so interesting how we argue with like God's plan, if you like, or our soul agreement. Um, I, want, yeah. I want you to tell the story. So you're on a plane coming back from Europe. Yeah. You had been to Europe and specifically the Ro to Rome and the Vatican. Tell us the story. Well, before I went on this trip, I had been diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis and I had been diagnosed, I, um, it was like in no, November time and I can't, I can't tell you the exact year in this. I mean, I could look it up and figure it out in this moment. I was in my 20s. It was in July that we were going to Europe and I went ahead of my family. Um, actually, not all my family. I think my I remember my sister and my brother joining me in Italy at some point, but I went first and I had a friend who lived in Italy at the time. And so I wanted to see her and I wanted to go to St. Peter, Peter's Cathedral, the Vatican and all of that. I was really excited about it. And I had been put on this medication in like November. Now it's like July. I knew that I couldn't be on this medication forever because it was not really good for your body to be on it long term but I was told I was gonna to have to be on it for the rest of my life I was literally on a walker um, when they diagnosed me and then it just I went from a, a walker to being on the ski slopes after then being on medication right however like I did not want to stay on it because I knew it was really bad for my body my face from the steroids was all puffy and swollen up and I still I mean I had like this my knuckle even with all that medication was still really inflamed and um, all red where every else you know went down except for my knuckle like my hip and my ankles and my jaw and my chest where I'd had the rheumatoid arthritis like that was all helped by the medication but not this not my one knuckle and so I was determined, let's just say I was really determined, like I just knew, like this is going to resolve, I just know it is. And I was in Italy, I was in St. Peter's Cathedral, and it was just so beautiful in there. It was, it was really interesting because I've gone back since that first time, I've never, it doesn't even look like the same place as the first time I went. First time I went, there was hardly anyone in St. Peter's Cathedral. It was like a handful of people were in there. Mm. It's wild because last time I went, it was like lines, you know, like, and I'm like, 
okay, it's been here for hundreds of years. When I went the first time, there was hardly anyone. And now, now there's lines around everywhere. <laughs> like, how did this happen in my lifetime? Go from being like no one in here to tons, hundreds of people. But anyway, when I walked in, it was so rarefied. It was so filled with light. And there were this, in the skylights, you know, where the stained glass, it was just like this beautiful, just light pouring in. And I remember just taking my time and just going up and looking at all this beautiful art from Michelangelo and just like just overtaken, you know, completely overtaken by the inspired energy in the space. You could feel it. And at one point there was a shaft of light coming down. And I remember I just went and I stood under it like this, just like, just drinking in this light, just drinking it in my body. And I heard click, 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 and I look, and there's a photographer taking pictures of me, like with a big old, you know, professional camera, and came up to me and said, would you mind signing a release form? I'm from Blah 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 Magazine, and the light right here with how you're standing is just incredibly beautiful you know and I'm like okay so I signed this release and that's the kind of magic that that was already present there was so much light so I looked at everything and I was just filled with so much gratitude and so much love and and tears even because it was so beautiful just so beautiful and as I was getting ready as my friend and I were getting ready to leave I saw these two huge angel statues together holding like this big shell of water, but there were ropes around it and it said, you know, do not touch. And I saw that, I saw the ropes and there were security guards over, you know, behind me off on this side and saw that and I'm looking at the angels and something was like, you need to touch the hand of this specific angel statue. And I'm like, well, I've seen everything and I've had an amazing experience. And if I get thrown out now, I'm at the end, you know, if they get upset with me, I have to risk this. And, I, and I'm not like, I'm normally not like the one who likes to break the rules and do that. Like I've always been kind of like the one who doesn't. Um, but I was like, I have to. And so I put my hand on this, this just, I had this like step up on my tippy toes and put my hand on this angel's her hand or his hand and I got all this energy just went through my body and I heard an inner voice that said you'll be healed and I knew it was the truth and I could feel that it was like instantaneous even though it was like you will be it was like letting me know that that going forward you know it had that sense and I knew it was true I just knew it like I, I knew in every cell of my body that it was done that the rheumatoid arthritis was just done and I was blown away you know oh it also told me but I have to do yoga for the rest of my life so that was fascinating it, it's and I wasn't really doing consistent yoga and it's like but you must do yoga for the rest of your life and I was like okay <laughs> you got deal <laughs> you know it's a deal and when it came time for me to take my medicine I would always put it off every single day I would never take my medicine at the time I was supposed to because I wanted to see every day if my body really needed it so I would wait until my body started to swell like till my ankles started to swell, till my hips started to hurt, to where I couldn't almost started to limp. And I waited the next day like I always did to when I would start to feel symptoms and it never happened. The swelling didn't happen. And that was it. You stopped the meds. I completely went off the meds. Yeah. Like done. And I have had like, I would say since my 20s, I've had maybe 
three flare-ups that lasted less than a week. Yeah. Um, Little reminders to do yoga again. <laughs> absolutely. Yes. <laughs> like, absolutely. Are you lacking on your yoga practice here? Let me just push you back. Uh, so, wow. Yeah. Going back to our conversation of a star seed here to a up level consciousness and now i have to explore this world in this timeline and in, in what you know what happens now in this timeline because we've explored other timelines right uh, other you know a history and maybe future lives and um what do people suffer with let me explore this uh, arthritis is a big thing yeah right why do people suffer with arthritis gee the food's pretty toxic and they don't move their body in that way and they don't use their their equipment in a way that can heal that you know their voice and sound and it's just just this exploration of life on planet earth in this century yeah that's yeah. what i'm hearing deep. with your story uh, yeah there it's deep exploration and i would also say initiations yep um mm -hmm. uh, i feel like you know, some of us have like an itch that's hard to scratch, mm -hmm. you know, in the sense that we want God so badly. Like, it's just like deeper, 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 deeper. You know, it's wow. that, that feeling of, I just want to be even closer. I just want to be even closer. I just want to be, I want to <sighs> closer to the mystery, closer to you. And I, I feel like, you know, that I've had many physical initiations, which started before I was even born when I was in vitro and my mama took to ES, you know, as a way to not bleed during her pregnancy, which was a synthetic estrogen. Oh, okay. So I've had like, my hormones have been like, Meh, you know, my whole life and it's caused a lot of issues, you know, in my body physical ailments yeah mm. a lot like i was a sickly baby i had my tonsils out i had my adenoids out twice i had tubes in my ears this is just i had high fevers um that destroyed some of the enamel in my teeth when i was a baby um mm -hmm. this is like when i was like tiny tiny i was in the hospital all the time when i was little um and so it's been my my journey has been very like I've had to face all these physical things and these mm -hmm. initiations and um and I I don't think it's I don't think I'm a victim of it mm -hmm. even though I feel like it's a it's something that needs to be addressed like the toxicity and even pharmaceuticals and like their the role that you know everything is interconnected right and yet I don't feel like a victim even though it's been like I've had to find ways to heal myself again and again and again and again. But I think that's part of how I'm able to help people too. Like if Absolutely. I didn't, you know, if I didn't Absolutely. go through all this, then I wouldn't understand how energy can heal. So how profoundly. energy can heal. Right. Because you know what I've seen, Larissa, and you know me, I've been doing this for a long time. I've been hanging out with new old teachers and talking to people and healing and teaching and i know a lot of people and i have seen so many energy practitioners or spiritual people and then their initiation you know their shift hits the fan if you like and they get sick or diagnosed with cancer and they go straight into the allopathic model and i'm like you've spent your life teaching people about energy and yet you're not applying that to your own life and it just it just makes me sort of think wow it, we don't trust it enough like we have this allopathic model where we have all our faith and trust in that right many people do and um we need to trust this energy you know this understanding that we are energy and we can mold the energy we can shift and mold the energy we can be sick we can be healthy yes. <laughs> we can change we can change by shifting our frequency we can shift our physical experience in yes. every way yeah in every and I'm, way. I'm a, my body is a testament to that like time right. and time again like internal bleeding with you know stopped internal bleeding right. in my body um with with the presence of Kali coming to me and teaching me how to do it but you yeah. know it was a 
a deep teaching, you know, an energetic and energy teaching, um, UTIs, being able to transmute those. Like, and we're talking so painful that in the past I would go to the hospital and and have to get on antibiotics immediately, have to get on the what the peridium, which is now like azo that they have in the stores. Um, so much pain, and I learned how to transmute those right. um, with energy and with kundalini. Right, with consciousness. Mm -hmm. When you were on the plane coming back from Europe, what an amazing experience. Go to the Vatican, have a healing, get on the plane, a woman sits next to you, tells you your life purpose. It's like, that was a big time. <laughs> Did she... <laughs> Did she talk to you about your physical experience, like you, the illnesses that you'd been through? Did she express any of that at that time? Well, she said, she goes, you know, I know you want, this is how she said it. She goes, I know you want to have children. And I know God knows that you thought you're going to get pregnant now, right away, now that the rheumatoid arthritis is in remission. She said, but God wants you to know that it's, it's not going to happen right away. Um, and you're going to have a lot of physical issues. Um, and it's not in your time. It's not in your timing. It's in God's timing. And to trust God. And that you're going to have to trust because a lot of time is going to pass and you're going to think, you know, why, 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 why can't I have children? And she said, and you're going to have to trust. God wants you to trust, trust, trust. Because nothing in this life is in your timing, Larissa, nothing. It's in God's timing. So what she led me to believe is that I'm always going to feel like I'm a late bloomer, you know, like that it takes, everything takes a bit longer to bloom in certain ways than I would hope for it to. And she said that this is a part of what I have to learn in this lifetime is trusting and, and that at the end of my life, it'll all make sense why everything had to be in God's timing and not mine. So, oh, that's just right. It's just like, whew. And again, I didn't really like that answer. Like she gave, she told me a lot of things that were really hard to digest in the moment, to be honest with you. You're killing me here. Look. I'm right out of tissues. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you're killing me here i think <laughs> that's that's one of the most important messages that oh you could share with us today oh god yeah but it's happened like everything that she said everything that she told me is like come it's all like come like everything even about my children and what my children were going to be like and um it's just blows my mind because she even told me like my children's struggles and and how I could help them and how they're coming in with some karmic you know um, wounding you know from ancestral she said it's in its ancestral lineage stuff that they're carrying from not themselves but from the ancestry and that this is right. what you can do to help your children with this and just you know how amazing. old were you at the time you were speaking to her I think I was like 25, 24, 25. So during those challenging times when you were going through your own illnesses and the kids were going through their challenges, did you remember her words? Did those words come back to you? Yeah. Oh, my God, yes. In fact, in fact, in fact, in fact, it's like, you know, we tried to get pregnant, like she said, for a really long time. It was. It, was, it seemed outrageous. And in fact, I got to the point where we decided that if I did not get pregnant within a year um, of a certain time, because we'd gone so far without getting pregnant, I, we committed to adopting if I didn't get pregnant within a, within a year of that, of making that declaration of like, okay, God, if it doesn't happen within this time, we are going to adopt. <laughs> like, 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 that will be the plan. And um, literally within a month, of saying that to God, I got pregnant, but here's the thing is that now, mind you, years and years had gone by of trying to get pregnant and it just wasn't happening. And because of my rheumatoid arthritis, I couldn't do fertility drugs like everybody else. Cause it like, it would activate my autoimmune response. So 
We watched this movie called Dogma. Have you heard about that movie? You've never seen the movie Dogma? No. It's with uh, Matt Damon and Ben Affleck and they're um, angels. And mm -hmm. Alanis, Morissette, Alanis Morissette is God in the movie. She doesn't come in until the very end of the movie, but she's God. I love it. Alanis <laughs> Morissette is God. I love it. <laughs> this is after her Indian, Indian trip because she had quite a shift in, during India. Yeah, but anyway, go on, go on. <laughs> so we we're watching that movie and there was a woman in the movie that was on this journey with these two angels, right? And they're very like, you know, earthy angels and oh man and they're like I remember they kind of had fallen from grace or something so they had to do something good I think horrible at remembering movies but this there's this woman that they're traveling and journeying with and she couldn't get pregnant and I didn't know this when we rented this movie right and um, her husband ended up leaving her because she couldn't get pregnant and she was devastated and so sad and then she goes on this journey with these angels and of course, after she releases her need to get pregnant and releases and surrenders and the whole shiver shebang, she meets Alanis Morissette who goes up, to, I think it was up to her forehead and goes, bing, like that on her forehead. And then she's like pregnant. <laughs> she wakes up like she's pregnant, right? So I saw that movie and I was just like, this is God talking to me. And I, look, I, I go, I, 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 was, I was like, I'm like, look at Doug. And I'm like, I bet money on this that I'm pregnant. Wow. I, I said, because everything is like this for me. It's like, it's too, it's like, it's like, you can't make this shit up kind of stuff. You know what I mean? It's like my whole life is like a series of these like prophecies and you know these things just happen to go and this is the way that you go now or this you know it's just always been like that for me and so I'm like I just know I'm pregnant I mean I'd have to be after watching a movie like this and have we didn't know what this movie was about and it's a woman who can't get pregnant and then she trusts and she surrenders and boom she gets pregnant I'm like I feel like that's me and I'm like we got to go get a pregnancy test and it's like, okay, we'll go tomorrow morning because it's late at night at this point after the movie. And we walked down to Rite Aid and I got a pregnancy test and came home and took it and I was pregnant. There you go. With Aria, who you've just released a little snippet of you and her singing together. Because I met Aria when she was, well, probably about one. I'm pretty sure she was walking. She was like a baby all those years ago. And she's like 21 now, right? Yes. <laughs> that was a couple, couple of years ago. Yeah, and she's 21 and fierce. That's 21 fierce, and fierce. Powerhouse. Fierce, just like her mama. And, you know, I remember you telling me the story of how uh, we had lots of chats, you and I, at your place, of how she was looking at, because um, we had just come from India and Sai Baba's ashram. And, wow. uh, and, you were saying how she had seen a photograph of, do you want to share that story? I can't remember it. Did you share the story of? of oh my uh, God, it's insane. Okay. So I had gotten a VHS tape, just dating myself here once again. So <laughs> I'd gotten this VHS tape of, um, of Shirdi Sai Baba's life. And I got it because I wanted to know more myself about Shruti Sai, Sai Baba. And Arya was a baby. She was, well, she's a toddler. She had just learned how to walk. She wasn't really talking except for one word here, two words. That was it. And she came out when I was watching um, the movie. It was on the weekend, so she was hanging out with her daddy when I'm watching the movie. And she... They come into the room where I'm watching the movie and she looks at it. She looks at the, the screen and she goes, Baba, Baba, like that. Like she's like, Baba, like, oh my God. You know, if she could say, oh my God, oh my God. She was like, totally like, Baba, Baba, Mama, Baba, like that. And there, the VHS tape is over here and she goes and she points to the VHS tape. She picks it up and she points to his picture, Baba. Baba, 
And I go, yes, that's Baba. You're right, honey, it's Baba. And she's like, Baba, Baba, you know, and she's just overcome. Now, at this point, my husband starts walking circles around the couch because it makes him so nervous that his kid is acting like this about, about this. Like, it's like, what is happening here? Um, and then the next day, like we all go to bed. She's all excited about Baba. We wake up in the morning. Doug's gone off to work. So it must have been like Monday morning because he's gone now to work. And we're in bed and, and she co-slept with me. And when she woke up, she looked at me and she goes, Mama, watch Baba. <laughs> And I, was, and I was like, I was like, oh my god! That was the first three words she ever put together. Mama, she had never, she had never Baba. Yeah, Mama, watch Baba. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, we're gonna go watch Baba now. That's all she wanted to watch. She didn't want to watch Barney. She didn't want to watch other things. And and mind you, it's all in you know Tamil or whatever language. It's mm -hmm. it's not in English. It has English subtitles, but she can't read. And she's just watching this movie from start to finish. She's a year and something old. And she's like dancing, like, you know, to the music. And and she's just, she's doing stuff with her little head. And I'm like, okay, my child had a lifetime. <laughs> He's a reincarnated Indian. <laughs> yeah, she is. And then... Later, when Mirabai came, and you know Mirabai Davy, right? Mm -hmm. Do you know Mirabai? Mm -hmm. So Mirabai is one of my besties, and she came to visit, and she's Arya's godmama. And when she came to visit, she was wearing a Shirdi Sai Baba necklace. Mirabai had never talked about Shirdi Sai Baba. I don't think she had ever, like at that point, he was never mentioned in our friendship. She never had any picture of him, any necklace or anything. So she had just been in Mauritius with Vish, Visham, who goes by Vishwananda now, and she had been hanging out with him and had learned about more about Shirdi Sai Baba because Vishwananda really loves Shirdi Sai Baba. So she's wearing this necklace. And she, so Arya looks at, and, at the necklace and she goes, Baba, you know, at the necklace. And Mir Mirabai goes, what? You know about Baba? About, she goes, you know about Sai Baba? And Ari goes, Sai Baba. She corrected her. <laughs> Not Sai, Sai Baba. And Mirabai was like, what is going on? <laughs> Ari is correcting me about Shirdi Sai Baba. <laughs> So, oh my god! So we have to tell people that might not know who Sai Baba and Shirdi Sai Baba are. So Sai Baba was he's since left his body hasn't left us. One of the biggest Indian gurus in India. You know how many people in India? Billion people. Like he had millions of followers, and um, and he, like the Dalai Lama, reincarnated from his last life as Shirdi Sai Baba knew his incarnations. So he was Shirdi Sai, and then he was another Baba before that, I think. And then and then he said that he'd come back as another Baba. So he's like the one soul who continually comes back into the body to teach up-level consciousness. Yes. <laughs> up-level consciousness. So, yes. yeah. Wild, like very, very wild. And later she prost started prostrating, full prostrations on her stomach, like on the floor one day in front of a Mary statue. But like right. literally like as Muslims prostrate in front, right, when they're praying, which she was never taught that. And and Shirdi Sai Baba was born a Muslim. And oh. so there were Muslims and Hindus that followed, you know, were students of his. And so oh. that really and Christians. And Christians, yeah. yeah. Everybody, everybody. Everyone did. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was I was like after Arya did that, I was like I bet you anything she was Muslim. she was born Muslim in that lifetime and wow yeah. her, so has you Muslim in the devotion. 20 odd years you know since that happened have you discussed that with her like because you know maybe when we're two or one we have those memories but that fades like she's obviously not still really conscious of 
that like she was as a baby. Is she or is she? You know, for years and years, she would say to me, Mom, I don't remember that at all. Right. Mm -hmm. And she actually, and I, and I think it was really healthy for her because my whole world has been in the bhakti, you know, um, mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. And so she's grown up, you know, in the music and the community. And for her, it was, in, she was really into it when she was little, little, little. She would dance and sing and, and she was like a little temple goddess dancer when she was little. And then she went into that teenage kind of thing where it's like, this is uncool. Mm -hmm. Like it's, no. You know, and people would say, you're so lucky to be Larissa Stowe's daughter. And she would say things like, and she's really lucky that I'm her daughter. <laughs> <laughs> she totally sounds like my daughter. <laughs> people say to her, oh, my God, Karen Swain's your mother. And she's like, oh, not that again. <laughs> that was Aria. Aria was like, okay, whatever. <laughs> and... Uh, <sighs> And so she was like, whatever, mom, I can't remember. But then at a certain point in her life, she started, I started hearing music coming out of her room, like devotional. And I was like, uh, Aria, what's going on? And she was like, oh, mom, the fruit doesn't fall far from the tree. You know oh, that. bless her heart. <laughs> Go so, on, Aria. I have faith in you. Okay, this is a question I want to ask you. So we've heard about your religious experience in the Vatican. And you understanding that you're a star seed, exploring consciousness, exploring what it is to be human, here to up level consciousness and, and teach humanity through through your own life experience and through music and mantra and meditation and teaching and all that stuff. What made you choose the genre of music that you chose? You know, why did you go into the sort of bhakti vibe and not another vibe or you know, you could have been a Christian singer or you could have, yeah, what, like why the, why the bhakti vibe? That, that was the question I had then too, like yeah, 20 years ago. Uh, I, I might have asked you that because you had shared that experience, you know, at the Vatican, how much in love with God you and you sort of felt that presence in a, like a Catholic cathedral and yet you were sort of spreading the message of God through this sort of Indian bhakti vibe. Um, it had everything to do with 9-11. So pre-9-11, I had a, a band and I was a singer-songwriter. I was, um, uh, I did, I was full on pursuing that, the path of the singer-songwriter and played in clubs all the time. Did play some festivals, but not like, you know, I started doing with the Sacred World music and they're really really spiritual like if you check out moment by moment it's full on rock but there's all these spiritual messages you know it's it's almost like it could be christian rock in a way you know if you listen to it um but i had been teaching yoga like because after i had that experience at saint peter's cathedral then it was like i needed to teach yoga to make sure that i continue to do yoga like they i was told that i needed to do so in yoga I would learn all these mantras that I loved and I would sing them in yoga class, right? Um, so I'd been, I was doing that throughout the years just in teaching yoga. But when the towers fell, that, that specific day changed everything for me. Um, my own personal messages didn't seem as relevant to me at the moment. It felt like it was a couple things for me. I felt like I needed the mantra. Like I needed to like totally dive into mantra for my own healing, given some fear pockets that were coming up for me. Um, like it was really devastating to me when, when the towers fell and, and it was devastating to me how people were looking at Muslims. Um, you know, the fear and how people it, it just you could see the fear the, the fear was starting to grow on the planet you know and and so and i felt it and so mantra for me was a way to really work with my own energy and i had read james twyman's book emissary of light you know that one 
it's an awesome book and I just yeah it's a wonderful book and he you remember all his peace prayers like he had gone to a CC and all the different the leaders from different faiths came to a CC to share their peace prayers absolutely Do you remember that part? absolutely just uh, maybe a year or so well, I can't remember maybe no before I met you anyway he was out in Australia I met him in Australia and traveled with him, with him to Queensland and we did some I was facilitating the Academy of Light where we were showcasing you all teachers yeah so I met James in Australia all those years ago yeah the peace prayer I love that prayer and, yeah. Right? Is there, and that was just so beautiful that he brought forth all these different prayers from different walks. And I, I just remember sitting in front of the TV, in front of the news, and they were talking about on the news, and people, some people don't even remember this, but I remember it so well, where they were telling us to tape up our doors and, and our windows to prepare for terrorist attacks. And it was so like... Oh. There was so much fear in the air and I was just like, I can't, I can't go there. So I thought of the peace prayers in James book and I went and I got his book out and I found, um, the, the Christian peace prayer, you know, which is from sermon on the Mount, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Love your enemies. And I got out my guitar and I just sat there and I started in that moment watching the news literally watching the news, I started writing music to that prayer. Um, and that was my, that was my antidote in a sense for how to manage my own fear and how to pull myself back into my heart um, and not demonize anyone, including those who were demonizing others. You know, it was just like, okay. Right. So, that was the beginning for me. I didn't mean to start doing sacred world music. It just happened because I found myself suddenly writing all these prayers and, mm -hmm. you know, creating music to all these prayers and mantras for myself. And I started taking from Thomas Ashley Ferrand um, at the time as well and learning more mantra from him because I just wanted to submerge myself in all of that and I remember thinking that I wanted to produce him because he had these mantras but he had them on cassette and they didn't sound very good so I wanted to like get him better produced I wanted to help him and so I did like this this hard disc recorder and I I started working on some of his mantras that he sang, you know, and, and showing him what was possible on this hard disk recorder. And he was like, oh my God, that's amazing. And so, yes, I love that. So I started really working on the, the mantras. And at a certain point he looked at me and he goes, Larissa, you need to be doing this. Uh -huh. Like, listen to you. Mm -hmm. um, I support you in doing this. This is, this is you. And I got pushed. Into, I just got pushed. You, you know, got pushed. You, you know what I'm hearing as I hear your story? That traumatic time on planet Earth gave you an experience that focused you in a much more powerful way and brought you into an avenue that sort of you spent, you've, you know, you've spent the rest of your life on. And I feel like what we're going through on planet Earth is doing the same thing. I was having a conversation with a client yesterday we're going through horrific floods in Australia at the moment, right? It's pouring with rain yet again. There's a lot of talk of weather manipulation. Like it's been since Christmas, since, yeah, just horrific floods. And like, why, why is this happening? And it's happening with an area, in an area where there is a lot of light workers and star seeds, a very concentrated area. Why is it happening to us, she's saying, why us? And that was exactly the message. Like through that contrast, there will be this powerful focus of energy in like, you know, you're here to make a difference in the world. You know, you're here to up-level consciousness. You're here, you know, I'm geeking out on that word, but, but how am I going to do that? So as you meet the contrast in the world, it sort of, it really hones your focus about how you want to do that. And that's what I'm hearing from the September 11 story. It really brought you into that into the how, into the what. Yeah, it was just, it felt like this is what you're supposed to do. And then as I started doing it, then I was, I felt 
because I felt like such an odd man out, you know, in the whole world of um, sacred world music because everybody is so sweet. Like, you know, it's just such sweet bhakti. I know. And you, you totally know? bring the rock vibe, uh, which was <laughs> so, that's what I loved about it when I, because I'm so used to kirtan and mantra being so sweet and meditative and you're like rocking it out. And I'm like, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> Yes. And, and, and myself too. I'm like, I'm like, should I be doing, you know, it's like, should I be doing this in spirits? Like you have to be authentic in your devotion. You have to be authentic in your devotion. And I was just shown, you know, you have to pave the way for others to be able to be more authentic in their devotion. Cause not everybody feels devotion as just this like sweet and somber and meditative, you know, there's like, there's so many different ways to connect with spirit and, and, and God is everything. It's not like, it's not like, you know, there in this pie, there's just this piece of pie that's God. And that's what God is. God is the whole pie, right? God is the full spectrum. You know, people, I know people, some people go, no, God is just light. And I'm like, but God is also shadow and that's where that's complete potentiality you know it's complete potentiality how can how can god be everything and yet not be certain but not that yes god is everything but not that <laughs> you know, like it's like so yeah i really felt like a strong message that i in this life i'm to kind of be a, a somebody clearing 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 for others um for others to have more authentic expression and their connection and to feel like how, you know, we can have all these different ways of expressing our devotion. And some of us are intense, you know, and I'm intense, you know, I just am. Um, I'm passionate. I feel deeply, you know, like my child, my eight year old, like I shared with you earlier, you know, she is like, full spectrum like you know she has like the most incredible compassionate heart like she's so kind and so loving and then on a dime she will be so mean and be like Bleh! you know just yelling at everybody and I feel like you know she has like all of humanity within her she's powerful you know I'm like God, wow to have all of it within yourself. Like if we could allow ourselves to experience our full spectrum of, of consciousness, still have choice with it, not be tossed around by it, but man, to know that we are everything, how powerful that is, right? So that's what I'm called, like within my music, my music I feel like is, is definitely created to give people the opportunity to experience God, not only in their crown chakra and their third eye and their throat and their heart, but in their navel center, in their, you know, sacral and their root into the earth. And like, rah! <laughs> you know, it's more Kali, right? It's more primal. <laughs> And it has sweetness too, you know, we, we go sweet too, but we're full spectrum, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. Your work, I mean, oh, your work has been amazing. I mean, it was amazing when I met you all those years ago, but just the journey, you know, you've inspired so many people and, yeah, broken the molds and, you know, smashed paradigms and uh, allowed people exactly, you know, spirituality is about oming and being in meditation but spirituality can be about screaming and yelling and getting loud and rocking it out and yeah it's yes. the full spectrum there is no one path back to self or back to god there is just what lights you up and turns you on yes <laughs> yes that's it it's what lights us up turns us on makes us juicier it's really it's really about embodiment and right. and then rising, but you can't go up until you go down. Right. It's like you have to get in first. And, and 
for thousands of years with religion, we've all been trying to get out of the body, you know, and to, I want to ascend, I want to transcend this suffering and transcend all these experiences. But the truth is we came here to experience it. So it's like, no, get in, go all the way in, you know, embody that love and then rise. And so sense. let the divine feminine rise, but honor the divine feminine, which is form. Yeah. Get in. <laughs> and celebrate the contrast, celebrate the drama. Yes. Celebrate the drama, celebrate. Because, oh, I don't know, endless teachings. What I find is there are so many well meaning light workers that want to damn the contrast. You know, they're like, they want to make things wrong. They want to sort of fight the good fight. They're always in the war, you know, the light against the war. And yeah. God isn't about the war. God is about the celebration of diversity, the celebration, the celebration. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for expressing that and highlighting that. Yeah. And that's what you're, that's what you're doing with your work. You're, you know, smashing paradigms and allowing people to celebrate. Yeah. I, I suspect that maybe in Indian traditions where mantra and kirtana are sort of very set in a specific way of doing it, you've just smashed all that. And did you get any sort of feedback from other sort of traditional Indians? Yeah, I bet you did. <laughs> like, no, 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 you can't do that. You can't do that. You know what's funny, though? It hasn't been Indian. It hasn't been Why? true Indians. It's been more people from the West who have an idea of, of what they think we should be doing. Right. The people who have had the biggest, you know, um, challenges with my choices mm -hmm. um, to explore and bring in rock and, you know, and full self-expression. You know, it's like, no, 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 you don't do that. No, I've been given like lots of like, here, let me give you this CD and this CD and let me show you what it's what it's supposed, supposed to, to be like. like, you know, like oh, and. And you can't be facing an audience. That was a thing as I, in the beginning, we did a lot of stuff for teachers and, and um, even like with Mirabai, not that she expected it. Cause I shared with, you know, earlier that she's one of my best friends. And when she started doing her darshans, of course she wanted me to be there and to share music, but her people, some of her people were very traditional and they felt like the musicians were there to to face her, the, the guru, that we were there to face the guru and that we should be on the floor and it should be like this. And it wasn't just with her, with other spiritual teachers, the same thing again and again. And I would be like, no, that doesn't, that, that feels like we're creating hierarchy and I'm here to, to connect, to connect with the teachers, to connect with everybody out here, to connect with my own heart. We're a circle. We're a circle of energy. It's not all just teacher and then the rest of us. <laughs> you know? Oh, give us some of your, you know, your magic. <laughs> you know, it's like we're, we, the magic is on the inside. You know, the, the love is on the inside of us. That's, we're coming together to experience that together, you know, to amplify that together. So yeah, I, I definitely, even within the bhakti scene in the beginning, there was a lot of, and it would get back to me, you know, and I'd be yeah. like, you're like, okay. What you're saying is so true. Uh, it's so true. I have a friend here in Australia who was in the corporate world and then she became a guru and she's got a really big following. So a few years ago, I saw her at a conference and uh, we sat down and caught up. And basically she shared with me that, she had sort of created a, like she was in like a prison of her own creation. Um, she didn't use those words, but that's what I felt as she was talking to me about how her life, and she didn't seem particularly happy with it. And she's the guru, right? The spiritual guru. Yeah. And um, yeah, because she's following those Indian traditions, like she's a blonde Western looking, but she's dressing in the whole, and she's doing the whole Indian tradition thing. And uh, it, it, yeah, it's kind of put her in a, a bit of a prison of the guru instead of breaking the chains of that tradition. And maybe you can be a guru and 
sit in the audience as opposed to be up on the throne surrounded with the you know with your feet in the water and people kissing your feet and all that sort of thing you know like maybe you can yeah just break the old dogma and paradigms and I had someone I had an Indian woman on the show amazing teacher I'm blank her name will come to me in a minute we we laughed about tradition as peer pressure from dead people (laughs) we laughed Oh my God, that's so good. That's so good. It's like peer pressure from old people. From dead I'm people. A, from dead I'm people. A, all this. We will upset the ancestors. We'll upset the ancestors if we don't follow the rules. Yeah, we can break tradition. We can expand, break the paradigms. Oh, darling one, we've been yakking for ages, I suspect. Oh my God, look at the time. So much to share. And I wanted to share some of your music. And I also wanted to share you and Aria singing because you just, I'll pop a bit of that in because you just um, released a CD or a bit of a snippet on your YouTube channel of the two of you singing together, which is so divine. That that would make me so happy because to hear my daughter sing, just, it's just for me, it's like one of the things that like touches my heart more than anything is to hear my, my girl sing. She's got quite the voice, you know, the voice of an angel and there's such an incredible pure vibration that comes through her. Mm-hmm. Her beat's such a little fierce, fierce calling off. It's amazing the voice that comes through her. suppose at 21 has she sort of spoken about what she wants to do with it she's just playing with it at the moment she loves to sing mm-hmm. um she loves to sing with me she loves to sing r&b she's got an incredible 
range, like an incredible range. Um, but she's not a songwriter. Mm -hmm. So she shares what she shared with me and she's like, mom, I don't know what I'm going to do with it because I don't see myself writing music. Um, and she's aware that that's really, you kind of need to write music if you're going to get out there, you know, and, and share your gift in a big way. But she has avenues, you know, like with me and, and she's actually like today met with a, a producer and she's like singing in the studio. She's being hired to sing an Ariana Grande kind of track. Mm -hmm. uh, to... She'll sing for her generation. She'll, she'll create the vibe that her generation will relate to. Yeah. And it might, you know, bring in that, that Bhakti vibe in the way that she'll do it. Yeah. 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 I, I want to talk before we go into music, I want to talk about Doug. Okay. So, Cause when I met you guys, He's so super conservative, straight businessman. You know, he hasn't got the dreadlocks. He doesn't share your appearance, let's say, or he's no. like, how has he fared throughout this journey with you and your illnesses and fame and music and children and like, how is he? You know, Doug and I are pillars, mm -hmm. you know, within our community. And it was like a setup. You know, we were set up by the divine. Our, the very first date we went on, I didn't even um, want to go on that date with him. You know, to begin with, he had to ask me and ask me and kind of wear me down to go on a date with him. And we went on this date. And during the day, I heard, and I, at this point, I didn't feel like it was true. Like my body wasn't saying, this is my person. But I was told. You know, I heard this voice that said, here's your life partner. This is him. And I was only 18 and I was like, no, no, I'm too young. I mean, I remember having an argument in my head. Him? <laughs> I was like, I was like, I don't think so. And they're like, yes, this is your life partner. And I'm like, really? I'm like, but, but, but I wanted to date. I wanted to, you know, and they said, this is your life partner. And so I always listen, right? And I did. And they told me that I, it would take me about three months to fall in love with them, to just hang in there. Because <laughs> I didn't have the initial attraction. You know, it wasn't like this initial attraction thing. Um, except that I thought he was adorable. I thought he was really, really handsome. I'm like, he's really, really handsome. But I didn't think he was my type. And so that's why I was like, mm, you know, cause he's conservative, <laughs> like he's like different. Right. Um, but I did, I fell in love with him like three months into it. And what I've found is that I understand completely why spirit brought us together because it's, we literally are two different pillars and he learns so much from me and I learned so much from him right? He grounds me and I lift him up. So, you know, there's a way that we really need each other in order to do, fulfill our life's missions here on this planet. And it, they're very interconnected, you know? So it's not what it appears to be. And we don't even have, like, if we had a longer show, you know, I'd share more. We don't even have like the most um, conventional relationship. We did, but we don't, you know, it's shifted. Mm -hmm. Um, over time based upon you know how much my kundalini started awakening and and yet you know we weave together in such a beautiful supportive like we trust each other like we yeah trust each other like to the depth of the depth of the depth you know that and again does it have to follow the rules does it have to be conventional do we have to follow the rules with that it's like we judge as humans we judge right and wrong and success and failure based on whose rules like who made the rules <laughs> yes who's doling out the the awards and the failures the a's and the f's yeah, yeah. so yeah we can break the rules and and still maintain that i've learned that now but it was hard like when it was you know we're first going through like 
when we came up against, you know, a, a big piece in our relationship, it was, mm -hmm. it felt like the sky was falling and that the world was coming to an end. And it was really scary, but we've made our way through it. And now I'm like, this is, it, it's almost like the world has even changed and caught up with that. But when we were first going through it, it was just the hardest thing in the world and took everything that we had, you know, to, to face and, and walk through our challenges together. Mm. But we're doing really well on the Aww. other side of all that. Give him my love all the way from Australia. Hugs from a very wet Australia. Um, you know, I was having a conversation with a friend, dear friend, yesterday uh, about relationships. And um, he was saying how, you know, he had met this woman. He had that magnetic energy attraction. They haven't, um, you know, done anything about it. But just he was talking about feeling that sort of sexual pull that you were saying was absent when you met him. And I said, that sexual pull that you were feeling is karma. And he goes, what? I said, how do you get two people to come together in a lifetime to work out unfinished business when maybe you've killed each other in a past life, you've lied, you've, you know, like you've done all this stuff. They use this sexual energy to magnetically get you together so that you can like finish that. But when you meet a partner where there is no unfinished business, there is just this soul contract, this soul agreement not that that magnetic energetic attraction is not necessarily there you know right. it's it's this soul recognition it's this oh you're wearing that body you have that personality I remember you <laughs> but you look right. different <laughs> yes <laughs> you look different yeah. yeah and so you have to get to know the personality body human you know concept perspective uh, complex you have to get to know them all over again but the soul yeah. sort of recognize each other and you don't need that sexual magnetic attraction to bring you together because there's a soul recognition yeah it's, it's an interesting yeah. it, that is absolutely true mm. and it's a gift you know it's a gift to have a partner that you go through life with and you can co-create with and, and absolutely and have a strong place for community to, to come together. That's right. really, I feel like with us is that we've, we've just been a place that has been a safe place for a lot of people to kind of come into. And I think it's that balance of his really strong, stable, earthy, you know, it's, it's like salt of the earth, you know, is who he is. He's very salt, salt of the earth, get shit done. Yeah. You know? Mr. Taskmaster, get, get it done, get her done, get her done. You know? So grounded. Right? So I, I'm like, you know, okay, hopefully it will all get done, but I do this. <laughs> you know, and he's like, focus. <laughs> I, have a, I have another friend here in Australia who's a musician, and uh, she shared with me that her partner, husband, uh, is completely skeptical about everything she does, but completely 100% supports her. So she's singing the language of light and she's using crystals and doing crystal activation. She's amazing. And he's like, no, I don't believe in any of that crap, but I completely 100% support you. And he's her rock and, and, you know, financial, like while she's putting out this music and maybe not making a lot of money, he's her financial rock. And he was in marketing. He's now retired. And so he markets all her CDs and everything. Like it's such an incredible union of so completely different people. And he doesn't even believe in all the stuff that she's singing and teaching, but he doesn't have to, right? <laughs> no she just needs that they're right. yeah it's like those different parts that need each other mm -hmm. just like you know the hands need the fingers right you know, need these separate fingers on the hands to all work together to be able to pick something up yeah to your heart there's so many people out there looking for partners that you know they're saying like me someone like me someone that understands what i understand Maybe your partner doesn't have to be like that. Maybe they can be completely different and completely perfect. Shall we do some music? Shall we do some prayer? What do you yeah. feel like doing? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, I can do that. Um, I just so happen to have my harmonium. I hope <laughs> you've got, yeah, original sound is on. Good. Okay. I have to remember because sometimes it sounds funny 
And you'll have to tell me, sometimes the, the harmonium can be a little, it can be weird on, on Zoom, so to speak, but we'll see. I think it's going to be fine. Light of conscious 
No words. <laughs> no words. Oh, that was so beautiful. I don't want to talk anymore. <laughs> I just want to bask. <sighs> oh, my God. Again, reaching for the tissues, but run out. <laughs> oh, darling one, Larissa Stowe, what an absolute blessing to do this, <laughs> to reconnect and do this for the show. It's funny, I've been thinking about it for years when I was running a conscious, when I was running, running a conscious um, radio station a few years back. Uh, we were playing your music and... I don't know. I, 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 I think I reached out to you. I don't know. We never got it together. We just didn't get it together. So we did now. So, uh, so. I think I, I think I was going through one of my, my health crises. Maybe. You know, honestly. Yeah. yeah. I was pulling, I was pulling in a bit back then and going, and then I, afterwards I'm like, I need to connect with you too. So it was such a blessing to connect with you recently and to get to have this time i wish you lived here you know? <laughs> have you been, have you been down under touring with your music i have not oh well we'll put that on the calendar shall we let's All do right. that in the coming years when we get over the sort of craziness when everyone can fly again and we can open the doors and uh yeah i would love that it's like i actually thought that i met you because i couldn't remember exactly how we met now it makes sense n and r but mm -hmm. i thought we met through prim and jethro of sacred earth oh right i don't think i knew them then i met them after i met you i'm pretty sure yeah yeah god they're beautiful too don't you love them yeah yeah and i don't know why but i thought that yeah there was a connection there. Cause you're, yeah, because you're Australian. <laughs> I connected you that way. But yeah, I thought we had met for some reason. But it makes sense with Anna Nara now. Just a love bug. Yeah, so we'll have to get you and the tribe down under to do some stuff one day yeah. soon. One day I soon. would love that. That would feel really good to, to come out and connect with you and in the community out there, all the light workers and all the people who are really focusing on ascension, you know, bringing, lifting that vibration up 
on the planet i would love to meet the people there is a lot of us there is a lot and i have lots of friends that put on festivals love fest unity fest um there's one called yes and and i said oh, what awesome. is yes and what's yes and mean and and uh they said i was speaking to alex who was one of the speakers and organizers of it and who also does unity fest and he says well we all know we're here to change the world yes and <laughs> <laughs> yes and. yes and <laughs> uh, yes and and what next so uh but yeah australia's going through some tumultuous times at the moment and uh so it's um not a great time to come down under right now with the flooding and the rains and everything, but that will shift. That will change. Yes. I'm thinking maybe 2023, 2024, 2025, but anyway, it's plenty of time. Uh, we, when we get things back up and running, we have to rebuild. We have to do, do some, uh, lots of rebuilding, rebuilding in a new way, but just yes. like you were sharing with September 11, it's a new sort of laser focus that will come into the community uh, you know, with the contrast that we're experiencing now. And there will be new things born out of it, you know, new new centres, new festivals, new ways of doing things. Yeah. I believe that, like, mm -hmm. wholeheartedly. I, I, I don't think we could have continued the way we were. And I know, you know, like, it's just not sustainable to be, to continue the way we were moving through the world. And... You know, I know that there's a there's a push to, to do things really differently, but I really believe in in those of us who who see that this is all happening for a reason mm -hmm. and that we're gonna pull this one out. Like mm -hmm. even though a lot of people are really worried, you know, about the direction the world's going mm -hmm. um, in the midst of all this, I keep being shown, I just keep being shown that this is this is the big contraction, right? It's a big mm -hmm. contraction before whew, the really big expansion that's coming. Absolutely. And, you know, those of us who know better, we're going to, we are doing better and we're going to do even better. Like we're, it's clarifying, it's crystallizing. It's like you said, you know, you spoke to that. It's like giving us even more of a vision of this is right. where we need to go. Right. And how we need to do it, you know, um, and that's where I need to put my energy because that's something I need to address in the world. Like you, you wanted to address that unity, especially with September 11, sort of demonizing the Muslim faith and demonizing, yeah. you know, like you needed to bring that unity back into di the divide, di address that into the diversity. Yeah. 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 People like, right, this is what I need to address. Absolutely. Yeah. And you've been going through some more health challenges of late. Um, just before we go, I know we've been talking forever. You were just sharing with me before I turned the camera on about a technique or a uh, thing you're going to do. The dark. Do you want to share that briefly with people? T tell people yeah. what you're up to. Yeah, I'm terrified, but I'm really excited. Um, I'm going to be going into a dark retreat from May 9th. Actually, I start the the darkness starts begins. I believe on the night of the 10th and then goes through to the 14th. Um, so it's like three and a half, four days. And we're talking darkness where you can't even see your hand, not a sliver of light, not a shadow. Um, and, and it's built, the room I'm going into, it's like a 300 square foot room and it's built into the earth, a door into the earth. So it's like soundproofed as well. So I'm going in there, you know, for like three and a half, days you know to be resurrected on the other side um and it's terrifying because i i understand that it when you do something like this that you really meet your fears you meet yeah. your demons so to speak the parts of you that don't trust the parts mm -hmm. that want distraction um i know that that's a big huge piece of it but then on the other side of that if you can surrender within that and find that place of surrender um then you can find deeper pockets of healing and and connection to what is yeah and forgiveness forgiving yourself forgiving the world more forgiving others maybe that like maybe that i've that i don't even know that i'm holding you know right. is with i've heard that that's tends to come up it's so interesting as you go into the darkness, you're going to literally shine the light 
on <laughs> on those parts of the distortion still remaining that you'd like to address, transmute, love, you know, all the parts of yourself that you're not in love with yet. You're literally going into darkness to shine the light on that. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Okay. Yes, and the neuroses, you know, the neuroses, the the mind, get, 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 you know. Um, mm -hmm. But for me specifically, like my biggest intention is to go in to heal myself because mm -hmm. I have had this breast cancer kind of scare come up again for me, and um, and I want to be able to to let my body's healing turn on mm -hmm. at a really deep level, and. And I work a lot with the Kundalini energy and I, my body has transmuted so many things I've shared with you, like it transmutes UTIs, my had internal bleeding, be able to stop. I'm like, mm -hmm. I've transmuted flus and viruses and all these things that, you know, I, my whole family, everyone around me got COVID. I didn't get COVID. Mm -hmm. um, I'm the only one who didn't in my entire, you know, which is interesting. Um, so I feel like I want to give my body a chance to in my spirit a chance to really meet this head on and see what can be done you know from inside out mm -hmm. so after that you're back you've got some things happening do you want to share with people what's happening what's coming up you've got some stuff happening in april yeah uh, before i go into the dark retreat because that's in may but before oh, i go in in, i am playing at the holy fest in las vegas and oh, then we're going to be doing uh yeah the holy festival of colors where you know it's like you throw up the colors it's so celebratory oh where you throw those that that paint that cut where what do you call it yeah i know what you're talking about yeah we do it it's like the they, starches you yeah, know yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah. they take cornstarch and they color mm -hmm. the cornstarch yeah and, yeah yeah like whew, it's a celebration of spring the return of spring the celebration of of the light over darkness, so to speak. Um, and we are going to be one of the bands that, that plays at this festival. It should be really fun. We just did one in Spanish Fork with like thousands upon thousands of people were there. It's so much fun. So we're going to be doing it in Las Vegas. And then we do an evening concert after that at one of my, my beloved people, you know, in my community at her home, it's house concert. Oh, great. Um, yeah, and then we have the Just Breathe In that you're going to show with Aria. Yes, we um, are going to be releasing that on Spotify and Apple iTunes and all, of, all across all the formats on May 4th. So Perfect. Perfect. And how can people reach out to you if they want to have some sessions with you? Or are you still running workshops? Are you still coaching? Yes, You've got yes. So yes. much to share, darling one. You've got so much to give. I know it's it's hard to remember everything. Um, still doing workshops. Like I'm going to be teaching a workshop at Disclosure Fest. That's on June 18th. I'm going to be teaching Disclosure uh, Fest. Wow. Which is an which is like an outdoor festival. Um, so does that word disclosure mean disclosure of what? Disclosure of corruption, disclosure of ET presence, like, or all of it, like disclosure of like who we are as multidimensional yes. beings? Yes, <laughs> yes. All like, of the above. All of it's it. Like, right. It's like complete authenticity here. It all comes out. Here's your And where is that? That's at like um, Los Angeles Historic Park. And it's right. going to be a really big festival, I know. Trevor Hall's playing there. Oh wow! Our fathers yeah. are playing there. It's a um, yeah. It's going to be really fun. Oh, cool! So I will be there as well. And um, then there's a Kundalini conference coming up online with I know Neil Gar. Okay. Uh, you, you've heard of that one um, as well. Um, that's Old kind convention. of yeah uh, and alan seinfeld i can't remember the date <laughs> so i have to like people are gonna have to go look at the website and that's gonna be up on the website soon i promise um that's coming up yeah i had neil on the show week before last uh exploring his journey which was beautiful because again you know there are so many people behind the scenes doing amazing things, but they're amazing people too. Like it, it's great to get to know, like he's doing so much in the consciousness community. I had Alan on the show as well a couple of weeks ago 
and Sheila, of course, uh, from the Wish Alliance, which is where I reconnected with yeah. you. Sheila yeah. and I are teaming up to do things. We're doing a mini conference at the end of May, an online conference, and there's just lots happening. There's so many amazing people out there expanding consciousness, yeah. up-leveling it's consciousness. Time, right? This is like the time, time for it. It's yeah. just it's like boom, 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 boom. It's growing. So there's, yeah. There's and I love lot. how we're all coming together and collaborating rather than having our, you know, uh, my show, your show. It's like, it's like our work. It's all together. Yes. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's the piece of the revolution. Right. That's <laughs> the that. revolution. Yeah. That is the revolution, man. That was like, you know, when, and you heard that story when Divine Mother came when I was super sick and I had Mama Gaia take me over one time and show me how we had to, it was me, speci me specifically, was like, Risa, you need to really let go of just always being the one that leads and mm -hmm. lift others up around you, that this is a time of the we. Mm -hmm. Like the me within the we and the we within the me, not just the me anymore. It's like, it's the we. Mm. And how can you serve, you know, crew supporting others and getting their voice out there and sharing their medicine in the world. And, and then I was later shown, like when I was like, how do I do this? Like, how do I evolve? And, and, and it was, it was the energy of divine mother that said, there's no more evolving. It's weevolving. There's no more evolution. Oh. It's Weevolution. Weevolution. That's where, yeah, that's where it first came. That's where it first came out. And that's when I was really, really sick. And I was trying to save my life when I was in the hospital. I was trying to find a way to survive, you know. And that was like, you want to survive? This is a, a an important piece of it is that you can't do this alone any longer. Yeah. There's and, no and more we, evolving. Yeah. There's weevolving. There's no more evolution. Evolution. Weevolution. <laughs> You know, it's so synchronistic that you're talking about this. Last night on one of the streaming platforms, I watched the documentary on WeWork. You know that Israeli guy that started WeWork? 47, no, I need to see it. $47 billion business, you know, crashed overnight. But it was so fascinating to me because all his message was the same message, expanding consciousness. We're doing it together. It's we, it's we, it's we. Yes. And then big money got involved and big egos got involved and it all came crashing down. And it was so fascinating to me, like, yeah, how do we bring this we evolution consciousness into the third dimensional paradigm of business today? Because there's something that doesn't gel there and that we have to sort of mix it up so it does gel. It's, we're, it's, we're getting it. We're getting our, we're yeah. getting like, what do they say that you're, um, what is it? Your legs, your sea legs, you know, it's like, uh -huh. we don't know quite how to do it. Mm -hmm. And, and yet, because ego working. gets involved. It's like, it's all about me. So the guy who created it was like, it's all about us. We're in it together. And yet he's ciphering off billions of dollars and having holidays and, you know, doing the sort of luxury. So he's talking the talk and he's not necessarily walking the walk while his right. employees are not getting paid and people aren't getting paid. He's having, he's buying jets and luxury. So yeah, it's about bringing the work in. It's a walking the talk basically. Yeah. I, th I think we're learning how, you mm -hmm. know, I think that's it because I was completely clueless. Like I don't, when she's telling me, I was like, I don't know what she's talking. I don't, I don't know even how to do that. Like, mm -hmm. and she's like, you will mm -hmm. just, just think through the filter of the we just start looking at how you can empower and how you can support others around you to be more not just in session work you know which that's one thing you know we support people in session work but using my my world you know like you're using yours to bring on people and to interview people right you're you're sharing other people's medicine with the world right i've been doing the revolution for a while <laughs> I've been doing it for a long time, honey. <laughs> and you have been the we evolution. And the, and the me kind of got lost in the we too, because I'm thinking it sort of seems counterintuitive to promote other healers when you work as a healer, right? So I'm going to promote your work and, you know, share your work and instead of just talking about what I do. But, you know, funny, it's so funny. There was a little struggle with that. But then over time, it's sort of dissipated because people over time get to know you through the shows 
even though you have all these amazing other teachers and other healers and other amazing you know light workers on uh they form this relationship with you and it it kind of works it it works it takes longer it takes more time but there is this yeah but it's beautiful the we evolution evolution. and you are the we evolution (laughs) and you are it You've been doing it. I'm learning. I'm learning over here. Like I haven't been doing the evolution in the way you have. Yes, you have, because you know what you've done? You've created an incredible community. Incredible community. Like through your music and you've been yeah, you have been doing it absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Just incredible community and allowed people to express themselves in a way they never thought they never knew possible. Yeah. By breaking those paradigms. Oh God, you've been doing it for ages. But yeah, we are we are doing it with the turbulent times that we're going through. We're finding new ways of doing it, new, yes. more focused, more crystallized, as you say. We're crystallized. We're yeah, we're sorting it out. We're all sorting it out. We're working it out. Yeah. We're working it out. And yeah. there's going to be bumps. That's the way it is when you're learning to do something. Like when you're learning to drive a stick shift. You know, that's how what I learned to drive on. That was hard. You know, to learn to yeah. like like do this while you're putting down the clutch and you're you know it, it's not. <laughs> it's like i'm not sure what i'm doing you know it's not so easy to begin with you know right and then you start to get the hang of it so right and it becomes second nature like breathing yeah Yeah. exactly so i I trust that we're going to get it you know that there's growing pains and we're we're working through it but i think it's beautiful that we are saying yes to it and we're all open to it even if our egos sometimes are like How's this going to work? I know. You know. How am I going to get taken care of while I'm helping everyone else? You know, it's like it's, right. That comes up, right? Because that's that a part of the whole paradigm. Absolutely. I see it over and over and over again. The good intention and then the ego gets in the way and says, but what about me? What's in it for me? What about me? And we get so caught up with the me instead of the we, the me instead of the we, which was very much the message of we work it's so fast. It's a fascinating doc. Check, check it out. I think it, I watched it on Prime. Anyway, it's on streaming platforms. Okay. Uh, the documentary about what happened to WeWork because I really okay. didn't know anything about WeWork, but just watching the ride of how he just, you know, he wanted to change the world. He's like, I'm here to change the world. I'm here to change the world. He very much had that message and that mission. And yeah, fascinating. It Darling, we should go because it's like we've just been I know, I know. we could talk forever but big, no. big, well, big love to all of you big hugs and kisses to the family and Doug we could give a big hug and kiss to Doug and Ari they don't even remember me I'm sure but I remember you and it's been such a blessing and a pleasure thank you so much such a pleasure I love you so much it's so I just oh I wish I could hug you I wish I could squeeze you you're Virtual just hug. amazing you're just such an amazing soul Thank you for the work that you're doing in the world. I really honor the work that you're doing in the world and how you show up. No, oh, darling one. Again, need tissues. <laughs> tissues. I love you too. Love you. Mwah. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> we were yakking for uh, over two hours. So this is a long show, but wow, so much to talk about. I was just telling Larissa that Sheila Seppi and I are organizing a live streaming online mini conference or roundtable discussion on the 21st of May. We're just kind of getting it together now. We haven't actually announced it on our um, platforms, but we're going to try and stream on multiple platforms, my show, Portal to Ascension, hopefully New Realities, and maybe on a few um, Facebook platforms as well. It's, It's going to be free, but we're gathering women uh, galactic goddesses from around the world Sheila wanted to call it galactic goddesses connect across the waters to talk about you know what we're going through on planet earth and and how we can navigate this time and the energies and the evolution and uh, yeah how the discussion about when we understand the collective story our personal story reveals itself and unfolds you know, it was like the, the question was, why are we all here on earth at this time? What the hell's going on personally and collectively? So, yeah, we're going to have this roundtable discussion with galactic goddesses from across the world. And um, just invited Larissa to come on. She's actually doing the Kundalini conference uh, that same day. So we'll see. So we're gathering people from across the world. I, 
I invited Judy Satori on, who's in New Zealand, who hasn't yet been on my show. We've been we've been um, trying to organise that for a couple of years now. We haven't I haven't managed to do it, and she's just informed me that she'll be on a plane during the conference, so she can't come because I wanted to like bring in the New Zealand aspect, which is amazing. I'm sure many of you know of Judy Satori, amazing uh, consciousness teacher, healer, New World teacher. So, yeah, stay tuned for that. It will be free and live streaming on various platforms. So it'll be Saturday the 21st in the States and Sunday the 22nd in Australia and this this time zone, the southern time zones, uh, which will be fun, a roundtable discussion with some galactic goddesses. Uh, and and uh, Jeff, as I said last week, Jeff Granville is coming into the Inner Sanctum this weekend to speak about consciousness and his experience with uh, McCoy, his son, and uh, going into that place of um, present moment awareness and, and bliss during having medical procedures like spinal taps and all sorts of things, having no pain and no fear, just entering that place of bliss and not letting the chaos of the third dimensional experience affect him quantum reality so we're going to talk about all that sort of stuff hear his story again uh coming up this weekend in the inner sanctum so join us if you want to it's uh well i say it's free to join but i do appreciate any donations that you like to throw our way uh send our way i should say if you're enjoying the shows or if you're enjoying the inner sanctums with the guest teachers or anything that we're doing including all the work that sheila's doing and and uh, Neil and everyone, all the work that we're doing, putting out, streaming these messages, putting out these messages free for you online through through the YouTube platforms and all the other platforms. So, uh, yeah, that was just awesome. God, love Larissa. Isn't she amazing? Just love her. Just love her. And I sang all the way through that. I had my mic on mute, but I sang all the way through that. Just that when she was singing, oh, so beautiful. I can't wait for her to come back down under. Well, not back down, but down under with the tribe one day one day soon one day one day one day one day soon it's pouring with rain in sydney australia as usual we are drowning again this week another 10 days of torrential rain has been forecast yes might get on the show with cat on third eye salon and discuss this and uh, maybe raise some money for the the flood victims cat and i got together the other day and we're chatting about a cat and, and uh Angela Anderson. So we might get a few Aussies, Aussies online to talk about what's happening down under. Lots of people talking about weather manipulation. Lots of people, lots and lots of people. As the rain keeps falling, more and more info is coming out about that. So that's very interesting. We might talk about that later. Lots of things to discuss, lots of things to discuss. But I will go, remember, check out the book Awakened by Death if you haven't already. It's always a pleasure to uh, talk with you and speak with you and share this to share this this expanding consciousness with you big love bye for now